What's up, gang? This is Ken Zerk, Ken Zilli, Gazika Milligan, the Villa for the Twitter, and we are back on Fate Stay Night. Last episode, we looked at the Tiger. Huh? We looked at the Tiger Dojo. We did some training and shit. Uh, this episode, we're, we're we're doing more training, I guess. Oh, bro, I looked at the what you call it. Hold on, I'm gonna let it load. Then I'm opening it. We in February 7th. Fate Day 8. Sword and Magic 2. Shut up. This is what I wanted to show y'all. Look at this shit. Why are there so many choices here? Why? See ya, Shiro. I'll bring something home, so be good. Bujane waves as she heads out for work. I'm gonna get going too. I need to swing by home, so I'll be a little late. I should be back by dinner though. Don't do anything rash while everyone's gone. All right then. It's half past seven in the morning. I see the two of them off without incident, so there's only one thing left to do now. Okay, we're gonna continue where we left off yesterday. Let's head to the dojo, Saber. Oh, are we going to begin training right away? You have just eaten. Perhaps it would be best to wait a while? Don't worry about that. I've trained myself to the point where stuff like that doesn't affect me. And today's breakfast was bread, right? I don't live an unhealthy enough lifestyle for something like that to affect me. Well, if you insist, I do not mind. Good thing. Let's just go. I spent all night coming up with ways to get that at least one hit in. So I want to show you the fruits of my labor. I'm gonna be, um, last episode my camera went off. I think. Yeah, last episode my camera went off. So I'm gonna be checking my recording a lot this episode probably to make sure that doesn't happen. I'm unable to dodge Saber's counterattack. Both the Shinai and I tumble to the ground. My fingers tingle where they grip the Shinai. Saber's counter, Saber's counter, Saber's counter attack lands as I lunge in with all my might. I figured brute, brute force was my only option. No shock that I dropped my Shinai and fell right on my ass after an attack like that. Damn, I thought that would work. Shiro, your expectations were unrealistic. Listen, you will not be able to defeat a servant simply by acting out of desperation. It is one thing to be determined, but you must first consider your opponent. So that may be true, but I lose if I stay on the defensive. I have to strike if I find an opening. That is true, but you do not understand how to properly utilize that opening, that opportunity. If you were to strike so desperately, you must wait for an appropriate opportunity. That goes without saying. I saw you looking away for a brief second that last time. I've only seen you do that maybe one other time, so I thought that was my chance. I applaud you for noticing that and deciding to act, but I looked away deliberately. I did so thinking it would not be sufficient to prompt you to move. I did not expect you to charge straight at me. That's pretty fucking mean. You shouldn't mock amateurs like that. I was not mocking you. It was a simple ploy. Fuck you, nigga. About to piss me off. Stay over that phone. I was not mocking you. It was simply a ploy. And creating an opportunity as... And creating an opening such as that carries with it a degree of risk. However, the risk I take by looking away and the risk you take by charging straight at me are simply not comparable. So what you're trying to say is that I should be less obvious about seizing an opportunity. If I make a big obvious attack, I'm squandering the opportunity. So you're saying I should be considering the opportunity and acting to suit it? Yes. You must learn to judge the value of the opportunity you have. However, I must point out that you are much better at discerning the boundaries between life and death than yesterday. As you develop a sense of danger, you will, be, you will become more able to determine when to fight and strike on your own. Saber looks pleased. Unless it's my imagination, she, se she seems happy to see her student improving a bit. It is almost time to rest. Shall I fetch you some water, Shiro? 
Hey, don't worry about that. I got it right here, man. Got it right here, Sean. Ah, that's cold. I love it. No need. As long as it's just water, I'll, I fill the whole kettle. So I'll just drink from that. I drag my fatigued body towards the wall. After wiping the sweat from myself with a towel I brought along, I take several gulps from the kettle. I take a deep breath, deep breath. It's been almost three hours since I saw Tosaka and Fujine off. I've spent every minute since sparring with Saber. As usual, Saber doesn't explain much and I don't ask her any questions while we cross swords. I have pretty much no chance of winning, but I do seem to be moving better the more I fight Saber. I'm not expecting to improve my fighting techniques. The point here is to train my body, not my mind, to get accustomed to battle. It's better than doing nothing, and since I'm starting from basically nothing, there wouldn't be much point here unless I spend my time working on this one thing. If all I do is think about how to fight when the time comes for me to face a master, I'm dead. Saber just doesn't even break a sweat, huh? I'm a little disappointed, but I shouldn't expect to be on her level in just a day or two. Just like yesterday, Saber rests, seated in a size of position. It'd be a waste to just sit here. Might as well take the opportunity to talk with her. Why am I saving? I don't need to save. I have the flowchart. Okay, let's see. Is this an opportunity? Is this... Why are there... There's only two choices. Why are there so many fucking flowcharts? Oh, or maybe this isn't a what you call it. It's just like giving us an opportunity to ask the ask what we didn't ask last time. Okay, okay. I'm gonna check it after I choose. But if anything, I'd wanna you know I I feel like I feel like if I ask this, it would probably piss her off, bro. I'm not gonna lie. She'd be like, "You're not you're you're too fucking weak for this shit. Shut your ass up." So we're gonna ask. I wanna know more about Saber. Before we start, let's check. Oh, okay, so it did lead to a choice. I wonder what all these other choices are then. Before she became a servant. I wonder what Saber was like when she was alive. Saber is so beautiful, so I'm sure everyone must have liked her. Calling her Saber is what's throwing me off, but I bet she was an ordinary girl who never even held a sword back in the day. You're stupid, nigga. So, Saber, what were you like before? I'm curious. I'm so curious I just blurred out what's on my mind without thinking or even realizing I'm doing it. Come again? Did you say something, Shiro? Ah, uh, that's nothing. I was just imagining what you were like. I'm not trying to find out your true name or anything, but I just wanted to know what your life was like. What kind of person I was. You were interested in the strangest things, Shiro. You can just ignore the question if you don't want to answer. It just kind of popped into my head. I know you're Saber, a servant, but I just thought you you must have been a completely different person before you became a servant. That's right. I imagine she lived a peaceful life as befits a lovely girl like her. Don't be stupid. I do not think that is true. One's personality does not change just becomes to become a servant. I was a knight who was handed a sword the moment I was born. There was never any other me, as you might have imagined. Seriously? Then you've always been so harsh? That's no good. You kind of sympathize with the people who are around you. What do you mean by that? <laughs> I may be stern, but I do not recall being harsh to those around me. That can't be true. Today's training taught me you're merciless. Look at this well! I make one tiny mistake and you happily drive in at every opportunity, you fucking demon! I, I, I did not do it happily. Oh, no, that's adorable. Hold on. It may be tough on you, but it would not be training if I were not strict. This is strange. I somehow never expected Saber to make a face like that. What is that look? I believe it is unfair for you to suddenly fall silent. Uh, I never thought you would get mad like that, so you just kind of surprised me. It's cute as fuck. 
Is that so? I thought I was only asserting my point. Yeah, but you're not usually so emotional, so that was new to me. Do you really think so? I was simply expressing what I believe. But those aren't your feelings, they're your beliefs. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying that you never speak straight from the heart. Of course not. What is required for me is not my own personal opinion, but rather my opinion based on my standing and position. That is true even now. I am a servant, Saber, and I will protect Shiro. There is no point in my saying anything unconnected with my purpose, and there is no sense in me thinking otherwise. That may be true, but that will be boring for you. You might have a role to fill, but that doesn't mean you have to devote yourself to that and nothing else. There are things you want to do, right? As I said, my job is to protect you. You are inexperienced as a master to begin with, and I am attempting to train you because you stubbornly insist you wish to fight in spite of my warnings. That may not be entirely true, but well, if you say so, then I, I guess it's okay. I feel like this conversation has softened Saber up a bit. She even looks more cheerful now, so as not to ruin the moment, I decide not to press the matter. Walk into the bathroom again. The next thing I know, it's noon. It would seem it's lunchtime, Shiro. Yeah, it is. Both our stomachs growl in agreement. Let's eat. Anything you'd like to eat, Saber? Not in particular. I have been satisfied with each meal you have prepared thus far. Saber puts it kind of oddly. Well, at least it's not picky like Sosaka. I'll go do a bit of shopping. I'll probably come back the same time as yesterday, so rest in the living room until then. Yes, I will be waiting, Shiro. I decided to try making shrimp balls. I always wanted to try making them at home. They'll be piping hot balls. A bit bigger than takoyaki. I bought some mustard for the balls, and I'm all set with snacks for our 3 o'clock snack time. I load my purchases onto my bike. That reminds me. I met Ilya here yesterday. She's not here today. Well, she probably shouldn't be coming here every day. Somehow not seeing her is disappointing, though. I haven't told Saber Tosaka about meeting Ilya yesterday. She didn't confront me as an enemy, so I'm hesitant to tell her, tell them about her in the first place. Just because she was here yesterday doesn't mean she'll show up today. And then she pulls up. So I really should get on my bike and... Why am I? Check the flow chart. Okay, I knew it. I knew it. Go no, no, don't go straight. Swing by the park. Yeah, swing by the park. She's probably gonna be there. I'm not gonna check. I'm not gonna check yet. All right. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see what happens, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna determine. I'll just take the long way home. It's about a five minute detour. I'm being whimsical here, and I don't need to make excuses about that. I park my bicycle, step into the park, my groceries still on the bike. Why am I doing this in the first place? It's just so impulsive of me. I just had the passing thought it would be nice to see her. There she is! There she is! Let me see. I fucking knew it. I'm the GOAT, nigga. I'm the GOAT, nigga. Everybody bow. Glaze me, nigga. Glaze me. Polish this willy, nigga. Polish this willy. And then I see a silver-haired girl standing off on her own. She doesn't seem to have noticed me. If I wanted, I could just leave. But if I were going to do that, I wouldn't have come here in the first place. Ilya. Who's there? Uh, it's just me, Shiro. Shiro, is it, is it really you? Is that really such a surprise? This park's closer to the shopping district, so me passing by here isn't all that strange. I'm honestly more curious why you're here again. You got that much free time? Come on now, find a hobby, little bitch. I mean, little girl. Yeah, you're exactly right. I don't really have anything else to do, so I came here to play. But Sela said I shouldn't see you. She said it'd be no fun to play with you because I'm gonna kill you anyway. 
Ah, uh, well, that, um, well, makes it kind of pretty hard to come up with a response. Um, but I don't think that's true because being with you is fun. So I've been waiting here all this time, thinking I might meet you again. So I'm glad you came, Shira. What a sweetheart. Wait a minute, don't tell me you were waiting for me this whole time. Yep. It's been a real long time. I was thinking how nice it'd be if you came here. You dumbass. I thought you don't I thought you didn't like the code. If you wanted to see me, you should have come to my Oh fuck no. Okay, maybe not. If you met Saber, that'd lead to a fight. But still, there are plenty of other places you could have found me. You had no trouble finding me at the shopping district yesterday. No, I can't do that. I can't go and find you myself. I just broke the rules yesterday, just at once. So I decided to wait at a place I thought you might come, and I was right. What a sweetheart. Ilya skips around excitedly. Her bouncing silver hair makes her look like a winter fairy. I got that. But why do you want to see me in the first place? If just talking to you like yesterday's enough, I'm happy to do it again. No, I don't have anything in particular to talk about like yesterday. I just thought it would be nice to see you. Besides, we're enemies. I'll come and kill you when the Holy Grail War is about to end so we can talk then. She says it so innocently. The disconnect between her words and her manner is hard to swallow. It's not that she's gonna kill me so much. It's not that she's gonna kill me so much as how unfitting it seems for her to be a master. Ilya, do you want to do that? Did you really choose to get involved in this Holy Grail War yourself? It's my grandfather's orders. I'm the best suited to be a master out of all the Ironsburns since I possess a really big Holy Grail. But that means you're doing it because your grandfather ordered to, ordered you to. You didn't choose to be a master. Maybe. I don't really remember, but I've been a master since I was born. So it only makes sense for me to fight. That's wrong. If you're just fighting because someone told you to, you should stop. First of all, killing doesn't suit you. Oh? It doesn't sound like you're pleading for your life. You actually sound really worried about me, big brother. Of course I am. I don't know what anyone else thinks, but I hate the idea of someone like you fighting. If it was up to me, I'd rather, you, I'd rather see you quit being a master and go live a quiet life. Bitch thinks she Yoshikage Kira. I may consider it if you become my servant. If you did that, I wouldn't have to kill you. What the, what the hell are you talking about? Do you really know what it means to ask me to be your servant? I don't know what it means. Is it really that serious? Besides, there's no way I'd be suitable for Berserker. I could be a, a, a substitute for Berserker. Oh, asking him to fight. <laughs> nah, bro, he cannot do that. I'm saying you should stop fighting. I'm telling you to give up on your servant. So why would you need to make why would you need me to be a familiar? Not a familiar, a servant. Servants are always with you, right? That's why I just need you to be by my side. What a sweetheart! Hold on a minute. Don't tell me this. Ilya think. Let me ask you something. What is a servant, Ilya? They're mine, right? They're always by my side and they protect me. That's what grandfather told me. I knew it. Ilya considers servants to be just that. Command spells, masters, none of that matters. To her, a servant is just something that protects her. Got it. But no, I still can't. I can't agree to that. So think of something else. What? I'm not good enough for you? Well, it's not about being good enough, it's just that... I'm worried about Ilya, but I know I can't be by his side 24-7 either. Ilya, I have Saber. And as a master, I need to stop other masters, so I'm sorry, I can't be a servant. What? I made a concession because I was talking to you! You're gonna pay for it! 
Hey, wait, hold on, Ilya. We haven't finished. Dumb fuck, Shiro. You're the worst for embarrassing a girl. Uh, there she goes. What the fuck? Ilya just runs out of the park, not listening to me anymore. I try to follow her, but I can't find her. Crap. This is just like yesterday. I sigh and go back to my bike. But I don't think she'll just suddenly attack again like when we first met that night. So I should probably have one more chance to convince her. We finish eating lunch and then continue our training in the afternoon. I keep crossing blades with Saber, never getting tired of it. We keep training and only plan to stop when Sosaka and Fujine come home. But our training is interrupted by the sound of the doorbell. Shiro, Shiro it appears you have a visitor. Imagine it's fucking what's her face. Yeah, I heard it. I'm gonna go get the door, so you stay here, Saber. No, it could potentially be an unwanted visitor, so I will accompany you just in case. Saber has a point. But while she's right, if the visitor is just a neighbor, they might get suspicious of Saber. The neighbors do think I'm the only one living here. Then again... Well, I guess I'll deal with that if it happens. Sakura and Fujine already come and go freely, so there's no point in me worrying about the neighbors. Alright, come with me then, Saber. But if the visitor is just an ordinary person, keep quiet. I know. I'm supposed to be your distant relative, correct? Yeah, that's a story. Alright, I'm calling it. It's Shinji. It's either Shinji or Ilya. It would be crazy as fuck if it was that witch girl. That would be crazy. Okay, coming. I rush to the entrance amid the sounds of incessant ringing. It's fucking Issei! Pardon my intrusion. I heard you were not feeling well, so I came to visit him. Oh. It's not an enemy or a neighbor, it's a friend from school. Oh shit. Oh, it's just you, Issei. That's a pretty rude greeting. Is that really how you should receive a friend visiting you out of concern? Even as Issei complains, he hands me a paper bag. Huh? What's this? Apples? A get well soon gift. Considering you hardly ever catch a cold and skip school, I thought I should at least bring something to make you feel better. I'm grateful for his concern, but unfortunately I didn't take a day off because I'm sick. And besides, a bag full of apples doesn't seem appropriate for a young guy like him to bring as a get well soon gift. What's wrong, Emiya? Did you not like fruit? No, I do. It's a little, compli it's a little complicated, but I appreciate the sentiment. I bowed at him to show my appreciation. Emiya, this may be a silly question, but who is the woman standing behind you? Saber is just standing, standing, Saber, fuck! Saber is standing just behind me. Oh, I get it. Issei must have locked eyes with Saber when I bowed to him. I've not seen her before. Why is a woman like her at your house? Issei gazes intently at Saber. He's extremely shy and always cold to new people and people he doesn't like. Well, her name's Saber and... I am Shiro's distant relative. I got to know the former master of this house, Kirisuga, when he was visiting overseas. I came here the other day to do some sightseeing and I was allowed to stay here given my connections with the family. Saber makes the story sound pretty damn convincing. So you're an acquaintance of Emiya's father, I see. I hear he loved traveling, so it's no surprise he befriends someone like you in his travels. What? Issei, who's supposed to be extremely bashful around strangers, accepts the story so easily. I see. I understand the situation now, Emiya. Your sickness was just an excuse. You've been showing her around, haven't you? Oh! I, 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 yeah, let's say that. Well, in broad terms, nothing I've said is entirely untrue, I think. Then you won't mind if I come on in. Go prepare some tea for me in appreciation for what I've done for you here. I'd also be happy to tell you about what has happened the past two days at school. Issei takes off his shoes and steps into the house. 
What do you mean an appreciation? I'm still kind of busy, you know? We can chat another time. Shut your bitch ass up. You were the one who abandoned your bike outside our place. Oh, right. I did leave a bike up in Ryudo Temple. Right? And I brought your bike back. I'm busy as well, and yet I didn't go to the student council room. Instead, I went straight home and brought your bike back here. Are you saying you cannot offer me some tea after that? He did do me a favor. <laughs> I might have three bikes, but out of three, the one I left the Ryudo Temple is the most expensive and my favorite. Sorry, Saber. Can we take a little break? Saber nods silently. Thanks. Then you and Issei can enter the living room. I'll prepare some tea. Japanese tea for Issei, black tea for Saber. Uh, am I also joining? I do not think that is appropriate. Surely you would not be able to have a casual conversation with your friend from school if I am present. Uh, that's not true, right Issei? Mm -hmm. Girls may be chatty, but I do not mind you, Saber. A woman as humble as you is a precious asset, like cultural heritage. Hear that? Okay, so go on ahead. Yes, I understand, but go, nigga, sit your ass down! What, is something else bothering you? If you were to prepare tea, I would like Japanese tea as well. I do not mind green tea. Saber is fairly opinionated for some reason. <laughs> it's odd hearing her say that in her usual tone. Uh, footage was still good. After about an hour of meaningless chatter, Issei decides to head home. Most of the small talk in the living room was about school and I asked a few sly questions to find out if anything unusual was going on, but it seems like business as usual. I'll see you. Will you be absent tomorrow too, Emiya? Yeah, I'm not going to school this week. Saber needs to be with me tomorrow too. Well, this shouldn't be much of an issue if you are with her. There are a few suspicious aspects of this, but I've elected not to ask about any of it. Issei nods as if satisfied. Now that I think about it, how can such a shy guy warm up so warm so quickly? Fuck! Warm so quick quick fuck! Warm so quickly and easily to save her. Hey Issei! Fuck! Hey Issei! For this being your first time meeting Saber, you seem to be in a good mood. What's up with that? What a strange thing to ask. I grew up in a temple, so was it really odd for me to be, be able to see the good and bad in someone? I do not know her background, but I saw that her spirit and soul are pure. She could not possibly be a bad person. Huh. I didn't know you could tell that kind of thing. I'm a little impressed. I normally can't, but even an amateur like me can tell when her spirit is on full display like that. Cause she's literally a spirit. Even a monk in training will notice the holy presence of a divinity standing right beside them. Simply put, Saber is just that beautiful and pure. Well, that's rare. Issei's praising a girl. Got it, so you're taking a liking to Saber too? That's good. I was worried Issei wouldn't like her because all she did was listen to us talking. Of course. She's a good person. It would be hard to dislike her. Yeah. And I know she's a good person, even if she might be a bit aloof. Saber's always like that, so don't tell you that to me she doesn't like you, Issei. She's aloof? Yeah, I've never seen her laugh before. And even when you and I were laughing pretty hard, she just kept looking stern. Actually, she was smiling pretty often. That's ridiculous. Sure, I've seen the occasional warm expression on Saber's face. But I've never seen her actually smile or laugh before. You're kidding me. I can't imagine Saber laughing out loud. No, it's not like that. She was smiling when she saw you smile. Didn't you notice? Huh? She was smiling when she saw me laugh. What, what was she doing that to make fun of me? Like, I'm not... Interesting. That's a pretty strange interpretation. But you know what? You really shouldn't worry yourself over something like that. Everything begins with questioning yourself. Ka! The fuck was Issei's pre Issei, pre son that he is, ends with his usual catchphrase and leaves my house laughing. Fuck is his issue. He leaves me with his cryptic comments. Idiot. 
At least he could have said goodbye. I like Issei a lot. Hey. Yeah. I'll take care of the house like a good boy. Make sure you scratch behind the ears. That would probably make me really horny. The sun is setting, so today's training ends. I'm practically at my limit, and I still have magecraft lessons from Tosaka tonight. I failed to land a blow on Saber like I'd hoped, but I should at least, but I should save at least some energy for the night. It's also my turn to prepare dinner tonight. Saber went to wash up after me, so she won't wash up after me, so she won't be back for a while. I'm home. Oh, I see you're making dinner, Shiro. Good, good, admirable. Bujine bursts into the living room. I thought I heard vocals. I was about to sit and listen. But this is banging. Hold on. Oh, I really like this. I really like this. Bujine bursts into the living room, practically a bundle of energy, and immediately dives onto a cushion on the floor. Unlike Sabro, who needs to sleep over half the day. Fujine is like this all day, every day. I bet it's no different when she's asleep. Hey, Shiro, can I have this apple? She's holding one of the many apples on the table. Sure, there are a bunch as you can see. Everyone should eat three a day. Really? Then let's make an apple pie. And by we, I mean you. Fujine takes a casual bite of the apple as she makes a suggestion. I put some apples I had already washed out on the table. But I guess she's not the sort to care. What a waste of a get well gift. Misunderstanding or no, shouldn't she be a little more considerate about the gift my friend gave me out of concern? For once, I should give her a piece of my mind. Kick her ass! Kick her ass! Kick her ass! What's this? She's actually gonna force me to make a pie. I should hide out for a while. Hmm. She might actually force me to make an apple pie. Then it's pretty much ready, so I'll step away for a bit. <laughs> hey, Shira, where are you going with your apron on? Uh, I'm just gonna head out front. The sock isn't home yet, so I figured I'd go and go out and check. Oh, how thoughtful of you, Shira. Yeah, Tosaka is a girl. She'll be proud to be happy to have you greeting her. I don't know what she's so fucking happy about, but she sees me off cheerfully. Damn, now I'm gonna really have to go outside or it'll be awkward. Wait, did I fuck up? Well, I guess I'll take a quick look. We look outside and we just see a f We see Tosaka's mangled corpse on our front yard. <laughs> we step outside and Ilya's walking with Berserker. And, and walking right by our house with Berserker, she's like, oh, big brother, is it fucking murders us? <laughs> Corpse party ass raw again, bro. Just complete bullshit for the sake of bullshit. <laughs> Misao ass raw again. <laughs> well, I guess I'll take a quick look. I take off my apron and head toward the front entrance. But then I hear a door creak and the door to the- Fuck yes! Oh, she's so hot! Oh, that's fucking awesome! Yo, get this fucking- get these words off my screen! Oh shit, hold on, I need like a solid- I need like a solid minute to just look at this shit. Hold on, I'm sorry. Solid minute to look. All right, I'm ready. Shira, you're not preparing dinner. There's a brief silence. I know who I'm looking at, but I can't seem to find my tongue to speak. Why do you look so astonished? I hope nothing has gone amiss with the preparations for dinner. No, I somehow managed to get a reply out, but I know I sound completely stunned. She tilts her head in confusion. Her hair waves about her shoulders. That golden mane is wet. It looks different than, than usual. And her hair isn't the only thing that's different. 
David certainly looks her age now. Anyone can see how cute and frail she is. Oh, so you were taking a bath, Saber. You were the one who suggested I do so. Is she blushing? Is she blushing? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Guys, I think I'm in love with Saber. Holy fuck. Can't believe this. All right, do you l like to take baths, Saber? Yes, I discovered this when I became a servant. In life, I was prevented from I was prevented from taking baths by the prying guys all around me. Saber has an almost girlish expression on her face. Must be because her hair wasn't done up in braids. Her gallant, boyish form is nowhere to be found. You are going to wash yourself. Please go ahead. It is going to be cold tonight, so the warm water will feel really very good. Sabra and I part ways she heads to the living room. I'm at a loss for words. I knew Sabra was a girl, of course. But still, she looks good wielding her sword, and I've accepted that. That much I'd accepted. But what I just saw wasn't fair for my faint heart. Yesterday, I accidentally saw Sabra bathing. I didn't think it was real since I was so surprised at the time, but today is different. She really is a girl. I banged the back of my head against the wall. I don't know what to do, so I just end up staring at the ceiling. This isn't good. This is really bad. Muttering to myself, I lean back against the wall. The cold hallway clears my mind and I find myself gradually returning to normal. Afterward, I still don't know what was wrong and what was bad. I'm completely lost. I'm so in love with Saber. I finished preparing dinner, it's past seven. Saber and Fujine are in the living room and so Sako's usually here by now, isn't. Fuck, she's dead! No! I hope nothing's happened to her. I don't think Tosaka's the type to get into trouble, but I also know she's, in, she's, she's someone who makes huge mistakes. I guess I'll go check it out. It means looking around the house, I should be fine alone. I head out to the hallway. I'm about to leave the house. So, so as I'm about to leave the house, Osaka walks in wearing her coat. Tosaka! I'm home. What, greeting me with your apron on? It's a good look for you. Tosaka jokes casually, but her face is completely expressionless. That's kind of scary. The people who can joke like that with such a straight face are the most terrifying sort of people. Tosuka, what were you? What were you? The moment I try to ask her what happened, I spot blood on her hand. It's a small blood stain, and her index finger is swollen. Does that mean? Tosaka, I have a bad feeling, and I can't keep it quiet. What? I'm not listening if it's stupid. Actually, did you maybe punch somebody? Bingo! I get that annoying Shinji a piece of my mind at the end of my fist. Osaka huffs and passes right by me. Okay, so she gave him a knuckle sandwich. Then the blood stain and swollen finger would make sense. Hey, wait! Hold up, hold up, hold up! What do you mean you hit Shinji, Tosaka? Why are you interrogating me about this? He pissed me off, so I beat him to a pulp. To a pulp? You mean with your fit? You did it with your bare hands? Bare as can be. Bare like a grizzly. Tosaka snorts again. A brief silence. I don't know what to say, so I keep my mouth shut. An awkward silence stretches between us. Let me get back to the point. You said you punched Sinji. Why did you have to do that? He deserved it. He was saying things like I should team up with him and that I should abandon Shiro because he's useless. He wanted to talk to me about a bunch of stupid stuff so I had to quiet him down by punching him. She's so fucking real for that. Isn't that short-sighted even for you, Tosaka? Or maybe... Maybe Shinji says something so stupid that he actually pissed Tosaka off even though she's usually so level-headed. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm the victim here. Uh, I think it goes both ways. 
Why would Shinji talk to you about something like that? He asked me if I wanted to team up with him. He's clearly fucking... What's it called? He's not trustworthy. Who knows? He might actually think of you as competition. He's been acting pretty weird since I told him we were living together. What? You told him we were living together? You told Shinji about us? Of course I did. Yesterday morning, Shinji called me up to tell me all proud about how I became a master, like some kind of hotshot. It kind of pissed me off, so I told him you were a master too. I thought that put him in his place, but then I found him waiting outside the house just now. So I told him that I'm living at your house, and that I had no intention of working with a half-assed master like him. Do you think that was bad? Yeah, that's pretty bad. Shinji was already smitten with Tosaka, so what she just told him is adding fuel to the fire. But still now, it all makes sense. I figured out why Shinji has been hostile only to towards Tosaka, why he's so persistent about asking her to team up with him. Meaning he... Meaning he up. But that's strange, why would he be so obsessed with me? A guy like him would never think about working with anyone. Actually, it's because Rain is special to Shinji. Nothing strange about any of this. I think you're special to Shinji. He's originally from a mage family, right? I think he admires you since you're also from a mage family. But you still have power and proper lineage. That's why he's so persistent with Tosaka. I think Ren's been a target for Shinji's affection since long before the Holy Grail War started. What? Well, yeah, I'm flattered that he likes me, but... It must have been a real surprise. Tosaka looks completely bewildered. Now that you mentioned it, Shinji asked me out when we were first years. For a moment, her expression as she realized the way that she had obviously forgotten was almost comical. I sympathize with Shinji just now. Whoa, no wonder he's so persistent. I finally get it. Well, whatever. So how did you reply? Oh, I guess I rejected him. I'll have you know that I'll... I'll have you know that I have to be the first to win. If I'm gonna do something, it needs to be my own idea. And if someone challenges me to something, I don't really feel up to it. So Sokka thinks really hard, but she's acting as if she really doesn't remember. I'm astonished. She might be entirely driven by her emotions. So Sokka, I bet you're really bad at rock, paper, scissors. What? How, how'd you know that? I knew it. If she likes to make the first move, she's probably not great when she has to react to someone else. Use soy sauce for that saber. Don't you dare try putting mayonnaise on it. If you say so. I witnessed Tiger doing it, so I thought I should try it as well. Fujine is just clowning around. She's hardly a good role model. Be careful from now on. Is that so? I was referencing Sakura before, and you took no issue with that, so... Well, I'm not mad about it. I took the time to make the meal, so I want you to enjoy it. So back to our conversation. Shiro, another helping! Fill my soup bowl up! Give me a bit of everything! Got it. What about you, Saber? We train harder than usual today, so you might be hungry. Not especially. But just to be so sure, I will take another I will take another serving. Got it. If I find you woke up in the middle of the night and raided the fridge because you were too hungry to sleep, I might die of shock. Why would you bring that up? That wasn't me, it was some burglar who came in and raided the fridge. Don't fucking lie. <laughs> Just a bold face lie! <laughs> then go tell that burglar to eat her vegetables as well as meat. And tell her not to eat all the dessert in the fridge. If that's what she was really after. Honestly, you're not like a hungry wild beast or anything. What did you just say? Don't call me a tiger! Nobody call- <laughs> I didn't say anything about you! Ow! 
Who in their right mind would throw a piping hot daikon radish at me, you fucking dumbass? Shiro. It appears the pot in the kitchen is boiling over. Huh? Hold on, Fujinai, I need to turn off the fire. Very well. Hurry up and bring the soy sauce braised chicken and egg. On it. I'm leaving Fujinai in your hand, Saber. Yes, please do not rush. Focus on the cooking, Shiro. I get up. But well, that reminds me. Why has Sosaka been so quiet this whole time? Sosaka, are you not liking dinner? It's not that. It's nothing, so don't talk to me. What the fuck are you mad about? Damn! She turns her head away grimly. She's not the type to dwell on things like Shinji for so long, so there must be. So there must be something else bothering her. Fujine goes home satisfied after dinner. Saber and Tosaka are in the living room. At first that had been awkward, but after training with Saber for the last two days, it doesn't feel that way anymore. Saber! You can go to bed, I'll do the rest. No, I will stay awake until you go to sleep. I would also like to hear from Rain about your skills in Magecraft. Got it. Then let's go to Tosaka's room early. You don't mind, Tosaka? No, I don't mind. I have to say, you sure have gotten friendly with Saber. Huh? For some reason, Tosaka says this with the same miffed tone she had when we were eating dinner. I'll be waiting in my room, so come by after you finish cleaning up. And I'll take the day off school tomorrow, too, so come to my room in the afternoon. Shiro, what did you do to Rin? She seems to be very angry. You think that too, Saber? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I've done anything to make her mad. Why do you assume I did something? Saber and I face each other and tilt our heads. We have no idea why Tosaka is so angry. Okay, try to strengthen this lamp for starters. You just need to reinforce the glass. Tosaka hands me an old looking lamp. I sit on the floor. I cup the lamp in my hands and take a deep breath, deep breath. Tosaka says it like it's easy, but I'm all tense from the nervousness. I've been trying this every night with a success rate below 0.1%. Tosaka says she wants to see what I can do to measure my skill. But there's nothing to measure if my strengthening doesn't work in the first place. I try to shake off any distractions. Right now I need to focus on the lamp. The blueprint of the lamp plops into my head. The material of the glass, its composition, the flow of its power. I can see it as if it were a network of blood vessels. Then all I have to do is infuse my magical energy into those vessels. I just have to do what I always do. The sensation of the burning metal rod sliding down my spine. All I have to do is let that burning nerve into myself, however much it shouldn't exist in the human body, and let it fuse with me. As long as that works, all I have to do is pour the right amount of magical energy into the glass. Oh. It shatters. I couldn't control myself and ended up using more magical energy than I should have, and the glass shattered. I looked timidly at Tosaka. Figured... I was afraid this might be the case, and it is. Huh? What do you mean, Tosaka? Isn't it obvious? I was absolutely baffled by your lack of skill. First of all, you don't even understand the basics. Honestly, I'm impressed you can produce any magical energy at all, but the math is so completely absurd. Um... Are you, are you mad? Of course I'm mad! I can hardly believe you've been training when you have such basic problems! And I kind of want to kill your mentor for not correcting you! Why are you doing it such a roundabout way? I get it, but don't badmouth my old man. It's my own fault I don't have any talent. He's got nothing to do with it. He has everything to do with it. A teacher's job is to correct the student's errors, and he took you on as an apprentice. I know it's pointless to take it out on someone who's not here anymore, but your teacher's got the first step wrong. Sasaka, clearly still angry, takes something that looks like a can out of her bag. It looks like a can filled with colorful hard candy. 
the sort of thing children overseas might like. I've seen similar containers in Japan too. They hold a variety of different flavored candies. The white ones are mint. Shiro, hold out your hand. I do as she asks. The socket shakes out the can and the red candy drops into my hand. Here, swallow this. Again, I do as she asks. It's not sweet. It actually has no flavor at all. And the texture is more rock than candy. I force myself to swallow it. Ow, my throat's tingling. What was that, Tosaka? What do you mean? It's a jewel, can't you tell? She says it so casually, but it's totally outrageous. A jewel? Why? I couldn't help it. I had some medicine too, but that won't work if I want to correct you. I figured I need to use the strongest possible options to open up your switch. That's not my point. Why, why did you make me swallow a jewel? I can't digest that. You know, if you're gonna worry, you should worry about other stuff. That wasn't an ordinary jewel. What I gave you is a compulsory is a compulsory is a compulsory learning device. Since you don't know anything at all, it's gonna start melting soon, so brace yourself for your faint. You say that I'm gonna faint so casual just as I say that. Ah! 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 It starts to get weird. What? My body is burning. My limbs start to go numb. The heat builds up in my back in a flare of what I can only describe as pain. I fur on my brow and try to concentrate or I know I'll fall over. You! What the- I know. I know this feeling. This is the feeling of failure. This is my body reacting when it fails to construct a magic circuit inside me. It's okay. It might be painful, but it should slowly ease up as long as you can maintain this state. Though the heat could last for three to, for two to three weeks. I really want to respond, but I can't stay composed enough to do it. All I can mutter this, all I can muster, all I can do is muster the strength to stay balanced so I don't topple over. Listen, the difference between a mage and a human is the presence or absence of a switch. You already know that this switch is for turning the magic circuit on and off. See the electric kettle over there? Mages are like that. Ordinary humans are just regular kettles that can't boil water on their own. But they can at least keep it warm. That's what we are, similar but different. The difference is in whether or not a switch, whether or not someone has a switch to boil the water or not. The moment we are born with it, or rather the moment it's made, is when we're separated into electric kettles and plain insulated bottles. Anyone who doesn't have this switch won't ever be able to experience magecraft. You see, you might be an amateur, but you do have a magic circuit. That means you have an affinity for it. It's why, you, it's why once you've created a magic circuit inside of you, all you have to do is use a switch. You're just toggling the switch on and off to produce magic energy. I'm suddenly starving right now. I'm just suddenly just starving. I gotta go eat something. I'm sorry. I'll be back. Back. I calm my breathing. So this Osaka said, so long as I maintain my composure, things don't get worse. You only have to create a magic circuit once. But all this time, you've been creating a magic circuit from scratch and incorporating it into yourself every time you use it. And that's such a waste. Once you've created the circuit inside yourself, even once, all you have to do is turn it on or off. Normally, those who have created a magic circuit will be trained on how to turn it on and off next. But your mentor didn't do that, so you've been risking your life creating a magic circuit every time. Of course, your father may have been misinformed too. I exhale. Sensation is starting to return to my limbs. Since you've been training the wrong way to do since you've been training the wrong way for so long, your switch is closed. Which means all I can do is force it open and make your body understand it has a switch. You see, the jewel you swallowed forces that switch on. So you'll be like this forever unless you can use your own strength to turn it off and um, return to your normal state. If you can do that, you won't need the help of a jewel. After that, you should be able to control your magic, your magic circuit with some simple mental commands. 
I get that, but can we do something about this burning sensation? She keeps telling me to turn off the switch. How the hell am I supposed to do that? Uh, you can already talk? Huh. I guess you're good at controlling yourself. You might get back to normal faster than I thought. As for the switch itself, your body will naturally try to turn it off to calm down and get comfortable as quickly as it can. All you have to do, all have to do is wait for that process to speed up. Easy, right? Uh, it's not. I, I don't get it. You say it's a switch, but it doesn't feel real to me. You might think that right now, but eventually you'll be able to form a really clear image. It'll be like a button in your mind and all you have to do is press it. It should open your magic circuit, easy as that. I hope so, but I just feel sick right now. I figured you would. You've always closed your magic circuit after using your strengthening magecraft, right? Now you're doing the opposite, you're opening your magic circuit up. It's like you're running full speed this whole time. So of course it's tough. But that's all part of being a mage. If you're gonna fight as a master, turning the switch on and off will be a huge help to you. I know. You took me by surprise, but I appreciate what you did. You're right, once I grasp the idea of this switch, it'll help a lot. So you do understand. No need to thank me though, you're my ally. So I'm only doing this because I can't afford for you to be weak forever. Osaka huffs and looks away. Maybe it's because my body's all warm, but days as I am, I find myself thinking that Tosaka might just be a good person. Why? Why are you staring at me like that? Nothing. I just thought you weren't really being honest. I see. You must have a lot of spare energy if you can manage to be so flippant right now. If you're fine, then you won't mind me continuing, right? Tosaka grins wickedly and draws closer. Hold on a minute. I still can't move a muscle, so what is she? Hey! Try doing your strengthening magecraft again. You might not be able to control your magical energy right now, but you'll but you'll be no use in battle if battle unless you can get used to being in this state. It's okay, I brought tons of lamps. I don't know how many times you're gonna fail, but I'm not gonna let you rest until you succeed in strengthening. She smiles, and even though I can hardly move, she hands me a lamp. Tosaka, this is brutal. It's like forcing someone to walk a tightrope while they have a 40 degree fever. Honestly, I didn't think I'd give up before you did. Tosaka glares at me. Her penetrating stare is accusing. Um... Sorry? I underestimated you. Never imagined you would destroy all 30. Sorry, but that's it for today's training. We don't have anything left to measure your skill at strengthening. Come on, at least I tried. I tried hard. Even though my body was burning up like I'd been thrown into a boiling kettle. I tried. But in the end, I didn't manage to succeed in my magecraft a single time. You know, if it's just the glass that's broken, you can fix it. I saw you fix the broken window in my house the other day. I can't. That window got broken normally, but these limbs broke because it couldn't hold all your magical energy. It's much harder to work with things than fuse with someone else's magical energy. Remember that, okay? Uh, yeah. That's right. Go ahead and rest, Shira. I'd call this a win since I managed to trigger your switch. Once you're able to control it, I'll teach you the rest. I appreciate the chance to rest, but what else are you going to teach me? You can only do strengthening magecraft, right? You said that's all you can do, so I might be able to kick it up another notch and teach you alteration magecraft. Have you been taught what strengthening, alteration, and projection magecraft are? I have a little. Strengthening is, as the word suggests, strengthening something. Most people think of strengthening as just making something harder, but it actually involves enhancing the object's attributes and effects. A sword gets sharper, a lamp glows brighter, and so on. 
Alteration doesn't need much expl explanation. For example, you can't start a fire using blades. Alteration is when the ability is when some it's when some ability beyond the object's usual traits is imbued into it. And then projection is. Wait, what is projection again? I remember the I remember my old man singing that word a lot, but. You know it's strengthening an alteration, all right? Then I can then I think you can imagine what projection is. Simply put, it's magecraft that can replicate things. Unlike strengthening an alteration, projection isn't a magecraft that imbues an object with something. It's essentially magecraft that constructs something from nothing. Using only your own magical energy is one of the most difficult disciplines. Oh, but you know that magical energy is disposable, right? Any anything you create with projection will disappear will quickly disappear. If you project a sword with 10 times the magical energy you use to strengthen an existing sword, the strengthened sword will still be stronger. Strengthening augments something strengthening augments something so it's efficient. On the other hand, projection uses way too much magical energy, so it's not really used all that often. Ah, remember. My old man said something similar. He said it wasn't worth it, so I shouldn't pursue it. Exactly. Now, if you're done asking questions, let's call it a day. You seem shaky on your feet, so I can help you get back to your room. Oh, my nose is itching. So Sokka helps me to my room, and Saber's waiting for me by the veranda corridor. Good work, both of you. I don't even have the strength to answer. I just nod and thanks and head into my room. How is Shiro doing, Rin? Bad. Really bad. He does not have the talent. It's a typical merciless Tosaka response. And the next thing I know, I'm staring up at the night sky. Tonight, I'm not trying to run away because I'm anxious around Saber. I'm just trying to let the night, I'm just trying to let the night wind cool my burning body, and to think about what Tosaka taught me. Once I can use my switch, then it'll be time to think about the next steps. If I can't even manage a simple task of strengthening, I don't know what the future might hold for me. I try to infuse magical energy into a wooden plank I dragged out of the shed as I mumble to myself. A cracking sound echoes up to me. The plank cracks and my strengthening fails. I can see its structure fine, but I don't understand why I can't control my magical energy. Tosaka said I was putting too much power into it. She even said that I should just use small amounts of magical energy and focus on reinforcing the object's weak points. So she was basically telling me to take it easy. She doesn't have to remind me. Problem is, I can't manage to ease up. If only there was a good way to relax. The sound of barely audible footsteps just reaches my ears. This is the second time I've sensed that presence. What? I don't need anything from you. The feeling's mutual. Rin, however, is apparently concerned about you. I can't just sit by and do nothing about that. I throw the plank away, glaring at Archer. Archer seems curious about the plank. He picks it up. Strengthening Magecraft, huh? Pretty pathetic quality too, I might add. What? Yeah, I know I'm not a fully trained mage. I feel bad for making your master take on extra work for me. No, that's not it. Even Ren is mistaken on this matter. What do you mean? <laughs> Applying new traits to something that already exists. That's just wishful thinking. You aren't skillful enough to do something like that. He's just saying whatever he wants, but I can't think of a response. He's right. I know I'm not skilled, and it's my own fault that I can't do magecraft properly. There's no point in taking it out on him. What's wrong? You were more spirited last night. Shut up! Just not saying anything because you're right. It's all my fault for not being good enough. I huff and look away. I don't know how we interpreted that, but... In a way, I think you've been cursed with poor mentors. Archer almost sounds impressed for a moment. That's not true. My old man and Tosaka are good teachers. I'm the one who can't learn. That's exactly it. 
You're better off with a mage who has no talent. Geniuses will never understand the struggles of ordinary people. Rain is far too brilliant to understand the mistakes of failure like you is making. I don't really get what Archer's trying to say. I don't get it, but if I had to guess... I don't get it. Are you trying to pick a fight? If so, bring it the fuck on. I'll rip your dick off. Another mistake. You're not fit for fighting, Shiro Emiya. Your battle is supposed to be a mental one. A fight against your own self. We gonna find our persona? They say a mage's battle is a mental one. I already know that. But if we're gonna fight, it should be with our fists. Honestly. You're making things pretty hard on Saber. Archer despises me from the bottom of his heart. I've never seen his eyes like this. They seem so filled with real disappointment and anger. I'm only going to say this once, so listen carefully. You haven't got a prayer of winning once the battle starts. None of your skills are worth a damn against servants. Saber already told me that. I won't win in battle. No matter what grand scheme I try, I have no chance of victory. Then at least imagine it. If you can't possibly beat the opponent in reality, then beat them in your imagination. If you can't win yourself, imagine something that can win. It's all you can really do. I don't know why, but Archer's words strike a chord with me. My heart's telling me not to forget them. More than anyone else, I know I should never forget what this man's saying. What a joke. I can't believe I'm giving advice to someone I should be killing. I guess a bit of Ren's softness is rubbed off on me. All of a sudden, Archer disappears. Archer's supposed to be keeping watch. He must have gone back to the roof where he can do that best. What's with him? I complain to the empty air. Naturally, there's no response. While Archer's words echo in my mind, the cold wear blows over my flushed body. That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment, or read a mod tap into the next one. Okay, you know, this wasn't too eventful. We done pissed off Ilya, so she might she might slide back and murder us. But, you know, she did get a heart. We gave her a heart. So she might be chilling. Let's check the flow chart. Let's see what we've done. Okay, you know, we got the little golden bath, golden shower type shit. We got a heart for Ilya. Heart for Saber. Ren was shooting up heroin. Alright, nothing too crazy. Actually, let's check the servant. You know what? The laundry drawing pole. I'm gonna go in and do this. I'm gonna go in and do this. I need to I need to suck it up and just do this, okay? Okay, I'm about to read this shit. Saber. Strength is B, C, C. B, B, C, I, she normal as hell. No info on her. Magic resistance A, cancel all magecraft below A. In reality, modern mages can't hurt Saber. Riding ability can ride most things better than the average person, but can ride beasts that are demonic and holy rank. Intuition, the ability to constantly sense the best course of action for oneself during battle. A well-honed sense six is akin to pro precognition. It reduces disturbances that interfere with vision and hearing by half. Okay, so somebody in the comments said it, but I just completely fucking ignored that shit. She can basically see the future in a way. Like she, like precognition, like she can sense that something is going to happen before it happens. That's very fucking helpful. And disturbances that interrupt with vision and hearing by half. So, you know, shit like, shit like that, that is not going to bother her at all. Magic burst. Magical energy around her weapon or her body and improves its abilities by releasing it in an instant. It's like a j oh, that's what she used against what's her name? What, what the, the assassin? Not only does Saber use magical energy for swordplay, it also utilizes it for defense and movement. 
She's able to fight Berserker despite having the physique of a young girl because of her massive amount of magical energy. An ordinary weapon that has no, that has no powerful divine protection cannot endure her magical energy filled attacks. All right. Okay, let's see. Barrier of the Wind King. The Unseen Sword. It doesn't matter. It doesn't let the enemy know the weapon's distance. It is simple, but proves tremendously effective in hand-to-hand -hand combat. It is a noble phantasm protected by a powerful magecraft, so it does not mean the sword itself is invisible. The sword blade sheathed in wind changes the refractive index of light and makes the original shape and sword invisible. Not exactly a vacuum stay, but the wind is wrapped. Why the fuck did they type it like this? This shit is annoying. Wrapped around the blade itself is a lethal weapon and seems to increase the destructive power of slashing attacks. It can only create a vacuum state in the instant that the compressed wind is released. In instances where the target on the attack has resistance to modifications caused by visual disturbances, modification of hit accuracy due to barrier wind will be ineffective. In addition to making the blade invisible, it can also increase the compressed wind and shoot it as a single-use projectile weapon. In that case, the damage is limited and isn't affected by Saber's own magical energy or physical strength. So seek it to shoot, niggas. Lancer. We don't know sh um, Saber's true name. Lancer. Kuchuline. B-C-A-C-E. Unlucky ass. B. Great hero of Ireland, demigod born of Lu, god of light, and king of Ulster, young sister, Dachan. His childhood name was Satanta, Satanta, and he was predicted to live as a hero. Kuchulain means Kulain savage dog. I'm not reading all this shit. When Satanta was young, accidentally killed the guard dog of a wealthy merchant. Of, the, of a wealthy merchant, Kulan, Satenta swore, if this dog has a child, I'll raise it to be strong and loyal like him. Until then, I shall protect you with my life. Hence the name. As an adult, Ku, as an adult, Ku had traveled to the demon-infested land of shadows to win the hand of his future wife. After overcoming many obstacles, he arrives in the land of shadows and earns the favor of a witch, Skatakatra. Oh, she, that's in, he's in, that, that person is in Persona. A uh, ruler of the land of shadows under her, who learned many magical and physical tendencies. He's demonic spirit, gay bug, leaves the land of shadows, spear in hand. According to legend, he's brave, compassionate, and a pleasant young man. He defeats his enemies mercilessly in battle. Man of integrity who has never broken a promise. Celtic warriors have a custom to make an oath. And soldiers who violate their oath fall under a curse. And according to his namesake, who made an oath to never eat dogs for the rest of his life. He tried his best to keep the oath, but it helped cause his death. In order to pr protect his country of Ulster, lacking in might as it was, exchange oaths with his enemy, sometimes at his own expense. His famous oath includes the oath he took with his arch enemy, Queen Mab, also in Persona, to fight only one soldier a day, and the oath he made with his foster father to yield to him in battle. Both of these incidents are, are invoked in the history of the war between Ulster and neighboring country Connacht. War began when Mab, the Queen of Connaught, invaded Ulster. Steal Ulster's gold. I'm not reading all this shit. Okay. On the verge of death, he's forced to break all his oaths, sapped of all his strength. Okay. His strength. He's pierced in the side with a spear. He refuses to down the ground and ties his body to a pillar. On the verge of death, he sees an otter floating in the river, drinking its own blood. He lets out a laugh, tickled by his self-destructive hunger, then dies on his feet. Now a legendary hero, he attains the divine protection of Morrigan, goddess of war and fate, who had power over death. Of course, Ku immediately starts causing trouble. He rejects Morrigan's protection. This enrages her. And so she takes the form of many animals and tries to kill him, repels all of her attacks, having bested her, heals her wounds. Morrigan admires his kindness and integrity, and thus resolves to support him from behind the scenes in order to reserve his pride. She keeps watch over him while taking care not to intervene directly in his predicaments. Magic resistance C nullifies magecraft from incantation shorter than two measures. Battle continuation doesn't know when to give up, makes it possible to fight on the verge of death 
and can survive as long as there are no definitive fatal wounds. Disengage the ability to withdraw from battle. They can also reset a losing battle back to the beginning and reset the conditions of a technique back to their initial value. Divinity. Whether or not one has divine spirit aptitude, the higher it is, the more physically mixed with the divine spirits one is. Soaring spear that plunges with death. Cursed spear that always pierces one's heart if it strikes. A fatal thrust from the demonic spear gay bulk. Its true ability is to reverse cause and effect, causing the spear to thrust after it has already penetrated the opponent's heart. Since the spear is struck before it even thrusts, it is impossible to defend or prevent against it. The result has already been decided. High agility cannot prevent gay bulk. Instead, high luck is necessary to reverse one's fortune before it's activated. Saber's got that B luck. Lance's got that E luck. Unlucky ass bitch. Okay, we got this decent motherfucker. Magic resistance D nullifies independent action. The ability to be independent for a while, even if the supply of magical energy from one's master runs out. If they are B rank, it is possible to stay in this world for two days, even if they lose their master. I don't like that that's a skill. I feel like they're gonna, like, Ren's gonna die or some shit. And then we're just gonna have Archer running around. And we're gonna, and like, this is like just supposed to let us know that. Rider, Master is Shinji. A plus, Phantasm. Magic Resistance B. Nullifies Mage Crab activated by incantation shorter than three measures. Difficult to wound one even using Grand Mage Crab the Ritual Mantras. Riding A, the riding ability, can even ride mythical beasts and divine beasts as long as they are beasts. However, this does not apply to dragon species. We don't know what her noble phantasm is, but it's an A+. Oh my goodness. We don't know caster. We've got assassin. Sasaki Kojiro. We don't know his noble phantasm, but... My goodness. I don't know. Is that constitution? I don't know what that is. While his existence is met with suspicion, his name remains widely known as that of a peerless swordsman. He was a beautiful swordsman who wielded a three-foot-long sword. He is said to have been born in the Eiroku period and famous during 1605 to 1612, but the truth is not clear. The books that feature him have been contradicting time period, have many contradicting time periods, because his name was not written down in the Book of Five Rings written by Miyamoto Musashi, his most worthy opponent. According to the records, Kojiro is, a, is from the Echizen province and studied under Toda Saigen. He favored the long sword, and after defeating the master's young brother, named himself Ganryu. After that, he went around to various lands as a martial artist and developed the secret sword technique, Swallow Reversal, that can kill even a flying swallow in the Nishiki River in Suo province. Then after terrifying, swords, after terrifying swordsmen in many different lands, he died fighting Miyamoto Musashi at Funashima that would later become Ganryujima in order to maintain the honor of the domain he served. Because of his longsword, he could not fight while holding the sheath and discarded it in front of Musashi. Musashi is believed to have said the famous line, Kojiro has been defeated after seeing that. Miyamoto Musashi holds the record for being one of the best swordsmen in Japan. Sasaki Kojiro is viewed as a worthy opponent but his real image is as uncertain as reflection on the moon on, uh, of the moon on water. People will say there was once someone like that, but the legend of Sasaki Kojiro that has been passed down to the present can only be that of a great but fictional swordsman that people fabricated. Presence concealment gets rid of one's presence as a servant, fit for covert operations. Swallow reversal, a mystical anti-personnel sword technique, min maximum targets one person. A special move that slashes the opponent with three arts at the same time. Apparently, it is one example of something called a, di a multidimensional refraction phenomenon. It is a fatal soul that is impossible to avoid in a different sense from gay bog. Mind's eye, false. A. Resistance to modifications caused by visual disturbances. It is a natural ability to predict danger, also known as a sixth sense of premonition. So he can also kind of... Uh, so he's like, he's like Saber. Vit vitrify, a mind as serene and as clear as mirror, as a clear mirror is still water, a mental defense mechanism that nullifies interference with the mind. Since he is not an assassin, he cannot use presence concealment assassin ability. 
but he can perform presence concealment in the form of a martial arts blank mind state. Knowledge of SOA, a special skill where hitting accuracy does not go down no matter how many times the same move is used on the same opponent. The attacks can no longer be seen through. We don't know it's Nova Phantasm. Hercules, oh my goodness, this nigga is stacked. Greatest hero, demigod, Hercules. We are we know we know the story of Hercules. We know the story of Hercules. Madness enhancement. It increases the rank of the parameter, but takes away one's most of one's reasoning. Battle continuation, the ability to survive, makes it impossible to fight on the bridge of death as, and survive as long as there are no definitive fatal wounds. Mind's eye false, avoiding danger by intuition or sixth sense. Valor, the ability to nullify mental interference such as coercion, confusion, or bedazzlement. It also has the effect of increasing combat damage. However, because he is currently being madness enhanced due to a class ability, the skill cannot take effect. Divinity. Whether or not one has divine spirit aptitude, the higher it is, the more physically mixed with the divine spirits one is. Being Zeus's son and having been welcomed by the gods after his death, Hercules' divine spirit aptitude can be determined one of the, of the highest class. Okay. Immortality that was gained from God's blessing. Curse. Turns the body into sturdy armor, nullifies all attacks ranked B or lower. And your strength just so happens to be B, Saber. Oh fucking K. Archer can't do shit. Weak ass. Archer is fucking pathetic. I'm sorry, that nigga Archer is pathetic. Nigga weak as shit. I don't know. Maybe he's gonna remember his true name and then realize, like, oh, wait a second. I'm like, goodness, my nose itches. Maybe he's gonna remember his true name and then remember, like, oh shit. I'm actually strong as hell. But like, bro, he's weak as fuck. Pathetic ass. But peace out. I love y'all. Tap into the next one. Ah.